Ladies and gents, hello and welcome! Coming to you not quite live from One Take Studios, where today we're going to be solving radical equations. That sounds like fun. All right, so what does this mean? This means that you probably already have some knowledge in your brain that's useful for the topic. Because if we're solving equations, our general equation solving strategies still apply. All right, we're still going to be trying to get the x by itself, so we want to keep that in our front of our brain. How do we get the x by itself? If you just look at it at its core, we're trying to undo everything around the x. So if you can keep those ideas in your brain, solving radical equations is not going to be crazy different from solving other equations. All right, so I've got three examples for you today. First example is this. It says 5 plus the square root of x plus 1 equals 16. What makes it a radical equation? It has a radical sign. It has a square root in it. Okay, awesome. I want the x by itself. I see the x. What can I do? What makes sense? What does your gut tell you? I'm guessing your gut says, let's do minus 5. So if I subtract 5 on both sides, the square root of, this is going to be x plus 1 now on the left, and 16 minus 5 is 11 on the right. Okay, now what? What will I do? Well, I'm still trying to get at the x, but I can't get at the x plus 1 until I get rid of this radical sign, which again is a square root. How do you undo a square root? What is the inverse of square root? Hopefully you're yelling at me right now and you're saying, hey, you should square both sides because that's a fabulous idea. All right, let's do that. Let's square both sides of this. What happens is quite delightful because this square undoes the square root, leaving you with the x plus 1. It's gone, just like that equals, well, I need to do 11 squared is 121, so there we go, and how about if I just subtract 1? There's my x by itself equals 120. Yay, happy day. That's it. Are they all that easy? Of course not, but we got to start someplace. Now, I do want to bring something to mind, something we're going to look at real quickly here. Can I keep 120 as an answer? Because we've had a lot of incidences of extraneous solutions lately. We have extraneous solutions with logarithms, because you can't take the log of a negative number. And we've got extraneous solutions with rational equations, because we can't divide by zero. So what's the problem here? Well, square roots in particular, if this was a cube root, we would be fine. But a square root, I can't take an even root of a negative number. So 120, if I plug this back in, 120 plus 1 is 121, which is a positive number, which I can take the square root of, so I am good to keep this value. Why do I bring this up? Because, of course, it's about to be an issue. So, second example of the day. <laughs> Don't peek, there we go. All right, here we go. Oh, that's much more unattractive looking. Excellent. So we have the square root of negative 3x plus 33 equals 5 minus x. Okay, um... Wait a minute, how are we supposed to get x by itself if I have an x here and an x here? Well, I can't access anything under this radical sign until the radical sign is gone. So let's start there. What if we were to do the same magic we did last time and say, okay, let's square both sides, because that would get rid of my radical sign. I'll agree with you. Okay, let's go ahead. Let's square both sides. Squaring, 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 there we go. All right, so what's going to happen on the left? Uh, let's see. The square and the square root are inverses. They will undo each other, leaving me with a negative 3x plus 33. And on the right side, well, let's see. 5 squared is 25 minus x squared is x squared. There we go. You wrote that down, didn't you? Okay, I just made the mistake intentionally that thousands of people on this planet will make. Guys, that's not how squaring binomials works. This is why I have an erasable pen. This doesn't work this way. How does squaring work? It means I'm doing, so let's put this over to the side here, it means I'm doing 5 minus x times 5 minus x. What you're doing needs to rhyme with oil. 5 times 5 is 25, but that's going to be minus 5x on the outside, minus 5x for a total of minus 10x for my middle term, and then minus x minus x, that's going to be a plus x squared. Do not distribute, I use that word terribly wrong there, when I've got a plus or a minus. If I've got terms, you can't just throw the square in there and call it good. Rawr, okay? Don't do it. 
but this is legitimate. Okay, great. Did we make our situation better or worse? I would like to say we made it better. Now we're solving a quadratic. In theory, you should be able to solve a quadratic at this point. If you're working on these problems, you've been doing quadratic equations for a while. So what can I do to solve a quadratic? Oh, let's see. How about um, maybe setting it equal to zero? I think that's a good plan. So zero equals, and I'm going to do some rearranging to put things in descending order. So highest power x squared, I'm going to put that term first. This is a minus 10x. Well, if I add 3x to get it away from here, so plus 3x here, plus 3x here, that becomes minus 7x. And then if I subtract 3, subtract 3, this becomes... Sorry. Oh, there, that's why. That was a 33. Ah, you were yelling at me. Good job. Okay. So 25 minus 33 is negative 8. Excellent, excellent. Um, I like to try factoring if I can, because factoring is easier than some of our other options, and I will usually make less mistakes if I am factoring. So x, x, something that multiplies to make negative 8. Ooh, ooh, I like this. Let's go negative 8 and plus 1, because that's going to give me a negative 8 for the end, but on my outer and inner, that's going to be plus x minus 8x. That gives me my center term as well. If you don't know how to factor, you should probably go back and check out a factoring video. What do I do from here? Well, if this factor times this factor equals 0, that means that either x minus 8 has to equal 0, or x plus 1 has to equal 0, or both of them could equal 0. So if we just do some little bit adding here, this is going to be x equals 8, and we'll subtract here, this is going to be x equals negative 1. Great! Did it cross your mind? Did you think about extraneous? Did you think about checking these answers? Do we get to keep them? I specifically chose this problem because a lot of you lately have been just tossing out negative answers because negative answers must be wrong. But let's think about this, all right? Let's go back to the radical and say what happens if I do negative 3 times negative 1 plus 33? Is that going to give me any sort of negative value under my radical? No, because that's 3 plus 33, which makes 36. That is terribly reasonable. All right, I can do that. That's going to work out quite nicely. And I'll put this over here, 5 minus negative 1. Oh, yeah, I like that very much. So we're definitely going to keep this answer. Does that mean we're getting rid of a positive answer? Maybe. Take a look at it. What happens if I put an 8 here? We go with um, minus 3 times 8 plus 33. So negative 3 times 8 is 24 plus 33. Can you do 24 plus 33? Sorry, negative 24. <laughs> negative 24 plus 33. That should be 9, yes? Or my brain is having a meltdown, which is entirely possible right now. Okay, 3 times 8 is absolutely 24. And then 6, yeah, that should be 9. <laughs> All right, so does that mean I get to keep this? Is that going to be okay? Um, well, this would have me taking the square root of 9. Okay, I like that. I can take the square root of 9. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What's on this side, though? Because this would have me on the left with the square root of 9, squeezing this in here, square root of 9, equals, on the right, 5 minus 8. The square root of 9 is 3. 5 minus 8 is negative 3. Oh, 3 does not equal negative 3. That's actually why we're going to get rid of this here. So technically, we are taking the square root of a positive number, which is delightful, but on the other side, because we have a negative value here, if I take the square root of a positive, it's not going to result in a negative. Oh, boy. So this is gone. I don't get to keep that one. So absolutely, you must check your answers for these. I know, I know. It'll take you forever. I promise that you will survive. I promise. Okay, one more example for us today, and that's going to be this one right here. Oh my gosh, that looks so much worse. Ah, what if we squared both sides? Okay, seriously, consider that for a second. If I squared this, keeping in mind what we just learned up here, I would have to foil this. Oh, no, no thank you. So what else can I do? What if, oh, 
what if I added this whole radical to the other side? That seems reasonable, because then I'll have the square root of x plus 6 on the left equals the square root of 2x minus 4 on the right. Why is this enjoyable? Because I have a square root, no more, no less, one square root on each side. What happens if I square it now? Well, let's see. Happiness and joy are going to explode, and both radicals will be gone at once. Nothing needs to be foiled because everything here is under radicals. This just becomes x plus 6 is equal to 2x minus 4. Hey, well, that's all right. So if I subtract x, I'll get 6 equals x minus 4, and I can add 4, and x is 10. Are you getting better at thinking about it? Did you check? Is it going to work? Because this is going to be, for here, this is going to be the square root of 10 plus 6, so square root of 16, so far so good, I like that, that's definitely doable. Minus, this is going to be the square root of 2 times 10 minus 4, 2 times 10 is 20, minus 4 is 16, that's a, oh hey, that's going to absolutely equal 0. That's a good answer, we're going to go with that. There we go. All right, so these problems have all kinds of variety. Some of them are more quadratic, some of them are more linear, and some of them definitely require squaring to varying degrees of difficulty. Each problem is different. Keep your eyes open. Think about why you are taking each step. You'll be fine. Thanks.